courtly love tradition of the French troubadour is found root in Germany in the so-called minnesang or love songs. Uh, the high middle German period started to adopt a lot of the uh, the traditions of the uh, of the poet singing for his beloved and being utterly devoted to it, but it took on a particularly Germanic uh, and menacing quality uh, as it developed its own uh, it, 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 its own essence. The um, one of the earliest practitioners of it was a guy named Heinrich von Morungen, uh, a, a very German sounding name appropriately. And he, he, uh, he leaves us, uh, I think 35 uh, final, uh, final poems. And uh, the, the one that, uh, that we have here is a, uh, an interesting example. Um, he's writing in the late 12th, early 13th century. Uh, we really don't know very much about him at all, but, uh, but he has a, uh, a, a particular talent for casting this song with a sense of the, not just the utter devotion that the French showed in their uh, courtly love poetry, but of the uh, taking that troubadour essence and infusing it with a kind of demonic German folktale quality that makes it much more, uh, well, uh, makes love itself a rather sadistic proposition or masochistic, if, it, uh, if you will. Um, the Wound of Love. She has wounded me in my inmost soul with the mortal, within the mortal core when I told her that I was raving and anguished in desire for her glorious lips to commend me to her service and to steal me a tender kiss of hers that I might forever be well. How I began to hate the, her, red ro, her rose red lips, which I never yet forgot, it troubles me still that they once refused me with such vehemence. Thus I have grown so weak that I would far rather, alive, burn in the abyss of hell than serve her still, not knowing to what end." So here you can see uh, love is a torture. Love is a, uh, a sadist. Uh, this woman to whom he is devoted is a, an object of some, at this point, resentment. Um, the, and yet he is drawn to her nonetheless. Uh, there is a certain nostalgia in the way he is picking at the wound. She has re rejected him in the past and he is going over this now in this song. He can't let it go. Uh, there is that sense of uh, borrowed from the troubadour, the kind of unreciprocated reverence for her. Once I bade my own lips to commend me to her service, that sense of uh, devotion, of uh, that behavioral devotion as a proxy for uh, for uh, love, for uh, for the uh, unattainable physical satisfaction, um, and yet. In the second stanza, you get the uh, the resentment and the bitterness that comes from that, and that ties the sense of love and uh, love and resentment, or love and hate, even uh, as a kind of twin and uh, an indissevable knot, if you will, uh, and and this leads to a kind of uh, a kind of victimhood. Um, uh, it troubles me still that they once refused me with such vehemence. Uh, he, he's now characterizing it um, and, and zeroing in on those lips. The lips become the metonymy for the, for the entire uh, woman because those are the lips that first form the word no. They promised the possibility of a kiss, but instead they said no, they rejected him. And so he is focusing in on that and dwelling on that and stirring up all of these uh, evil portents within him. 
you can see here the traditional German folklore, the same darkness that would give us the Brothers Grimm uh, that, that is stirring up within this poem uh, that is very distinct from the troubadour tradition where love is, you know, not necessarily all very easy, but it's, at least it's not satanic. <laughs> Um, at the end, he reaches a kind of consummation. He would rather alive burn in the abyss of hell than serve her still, not knowing to what end. But interestingly, uh, serving her still, not knowing to what end, it, it raises the question, well, if he did know that it was going somewhere, is it the uncertainty he hates? Um, what if he did have a promise of it developing into something? What if he did have a promise of some satisfaction, ultimately? Um, it is a sense of, well, maybe the, maybe the pain is worth it then. Not knowing to what end. And when he's dropping that line, perhaps he is singing this to the woman, even. With the woman in the room. He is singing, he is a court poet. He is singing theoretically with lovely ladies in the room and maybe he is dangling this out there not knowing to what end which is a way of saying if you just give me some hope if you just give me a reason to keep going maybe maybe I can hold on maybe I can keep going maybe I can keep loving you no matter how much agony it is which is uh, dark. It's a, uh, it's a troubling vision of love, a troubling vision of life. Um, if the promise of bliss is only a faint mirage off in the future, of, uh, of great precariousness, a very uncertain future. And it is predicated by a life of torment. Well, what is, how is that not a proxy for uh, life on earth and the hope of God? Can you really yearn for joy if life itself is such torment.